Hey, it's Mark from Ripple Trading. So I don't know about you, but I've been looking at a lot of charts and graphs recently. So I thought this would be a great time to look at how you can use motion to quickly and easily build charts and graphs. So let's take a look. So here we are in motion. I've got a new untitled motion project. I've pressed shift Z to fit the canvas into the window. And let's start out by creating some axes for our chart. So I'll go down here to our shape tools. I'll select the line tool, click and hold down the shift key in order to draw a horizontal line and release the mouse. And then I'll do the same thing starting here, hold the shift key and drag up. Then what I'll do is select both of these at the same time, go to the inspector and here I can adjust how wide these are, their color, etc. I'll just leave them at white, but what I will do is change the end cap to be an arrow. If I press command slash, I can hide the on-screen controls and we can see our little arrows there. We can increase the size of those arrows if we want, make them a little bigger. Then I'll select the top one, make sure it's selected, and I'll hit command left arrow just to line it up a little bit better. I can also hold down spacebar command and zoom in tight, and I can see that's lined up pretty well, but while we're there, I could press command left arrow to move it over a little bit more. Shift Z to fit it back to the window. Great. So we have our axes. Now for the grid. First thing we'll do is go to the library, to generators, to the overall generators category, and I'm gonna select the grid and drop it in the same group. The grid looks terrible by default, but if we reduce the line width down to one, and then we take the background width and spread that out, and the background height and spread that out, we can make a more reasonable grid and it's very, very flexible here in terms of the number of lines. And then what we can use is the width and height in order to reduce this to pretty much match our axes. So I'm just dragging in the width and height values and get something like that. I can also make the background opacity zero so that this background color doesn't show through. And what that allows us to do, for instance, is make these tick marks show up a little bit below and a little bit to the right there. I can also use the offset in order to make it start at the right place. I'll just make sure the lines of the grid lines overlap the lines of our axes. And now we've got a great grid that's very flexible for adding in our data. Now I wanna put a series along the bottom of data points. So these could be days or months or years or some kind of increment. I'm just gonna use months here. So I'll press T for the text tool click and type Jan for January, escape. I hit command slash so we can see the outline. I'm just gonna line it up under there. I'll hold down the option key, drag with the shift key held down so that I'm dragging directly to the right, not up and down for the next one. And then I'll select both of those. And once again, option drag, add the shift key. Then I'll select all four of those, option drag with the shift key. And I need two more. So in this case, I'll just select this one and option drag and option drag. And now I can just change the name of each of these. If I wanna modify the text in any way, I can select them all and select, for instance, a different font. I'll leave the current font, the font size. I can go to appearance, adjust the color. So you can adjust them all at once very easily. You would do the same thing for perhaps numbers along the side. So I'll do that quickly so you don't have to watch me do it. It's the same process. First, I'll take all these and put them in one group, shift command G and call it months. And I'll select all those and make them the same color as our months. Shift Command G. And just throw them in a group. Great, so now let's add our data. I'll choose our Bezier tool. And let's say I know the data points I need. I'm just gonna go ahead and start drawing a line that represents those data points. 
I'll press return. Then in the inspector, I'll turn off the fill. I'll keep the outline. I could change the outline color. And there I've got my data points. Now, I want this line to animate on so that we see it change over time. So with it selected, under the behavior shortcut menu, I'll choose shape, right on. And let's say I want to stop the right on, oh, in about five seconds. So I'll move forwards to about five seconds. Press O to trim it. And now when we play, first I'll deselect everything so we don't see that red line. But now when we play, we have an animated chart. Let's say we'd like each value to appear at each data point. First, I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup. I'll take our grid and our axes, Option Command G to put them in a group and just call it graph. I'll create a new group, Shift Command N, and I'll call it data points on graph. And then with the playhead at a point where I can see the graph, I'll again press T for the text tool and just enter these data points over each data point. By the way, if you ever want to adjust this line, if I just select it, right click, choose Edit Points, I can adjust any point on this line to fix it if it's not quite right, or to adjust it for new data points if new data comes in. Shift S to get out of that. Okay, I've got all the numbers, but if I go back to the beginning, we don't see them because they don't exist yet. So I really want each of those numbers to come on at the right time. So I'll move forward, and this is where I want that first number to appear. So right here, I'll scroll down to that first number down here in the timeline, and press I so it appears at that point in time. I'll move forward to the next one, select the next one, I, and continue with that. You could do this in the Layers tab as well. And now when we play, each of those numbers appears. To make this animation more dynamic, we can add a camera. I'll choose Add Object, Camera, switch to 3D, and I can use these controls up in the corner to change the camera position. I'll move the playhead back home. I'll dolly in closer and pan over so we can start down here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna animate the camera to move. In order to do that, I'm gonna use a behavior under basic motion called the move behavior. And by the end of this move, right now by default, that move just goes back to the original camera position. I'll press O to trim it so the move ends at the same time that our right on ends. And right now, the camera just pulls out to reveal the whole graph. But if I wanted to do something else, I can use this on-screen control to say, maybe I just want it to pull over here and get a little closer. And I can drag inside here just to pan it in both X and Y at the same time and move it up like that. So now, We have a camera movement that follows the animated graph. And where the graph goes slightly off the screen there, no problem, let's just bring it up a little bit so it's on the screen there. And then now we have the camera following it the entire way. You can also add a tilt to the whole graph so that it's on an angle. Pan it back into position. And in this case, because I've done that, I'll also adjust my move behavior. And I'll adjust the end of the move behavior to be closer over here. Zoom in a little bit more. And also make sure we get this high point up here. And then maybe I'll add another move behavior right here. Behaviors, basic motion, move. 
I'll press I so it starts right here, and then O so it ends right there. And during that move behavior, I'll also go to the inspector, select the property tab, go under rotation where we've got this rotation that we added, I'll set keyframes, so that by the end of that move, we are back to zero for rotation and should have our original graph framing back. I'll press Command-8 to go into the keyframe editor. With the camera selected, I'll select these rotation properties and make them continuous so it's a smooth curve. Command-8 to close that just so our final rotation is a little smoother coming back out. There we go. And there we have a dynamic graph animation. I hope you found that useful. At rebeltraining.com, we have a ton of tutorials on how to use motion to create motion graphics and visual effects for a wide variety of projects. So please check it out, and we'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio.